desperate Obama just showed up where Trump was and tried to take over as president, blows up in his face, it's natural to be a little bit jealous of whoever gets hired to take your old job, especially if you've been removed against your will, but former President Obama seems to be taking it to a whole new level. Not only is he refusing to leave D.C. and creeping suspiciously close to the Trump family in his talk as well as his choice of neighborhood, but he's decided recently to remind the United States what we were missing with him out of office. The former communist-in-chief thought it would be a good idea to show up on President Trump's home turf and throw some shade at the president's policy in regards to the Paris Agreement. A bummer should really know better than to go to the Trump-dominated form of social media and try to show him up but ever the glutton for punishment, that's exactly what he tried to do. He was successful in on thing, it does have us reflecting on what we are missing with the Obamas out of the White House, but I'm not sure he'll be thrilled with the result. Via Daily Wire, we just checked the US Constitution and, we were right, there's only one president at a time. But Barack Obama, who moved out of the White House on January 20th and, we all hoped, into obscurity, is trying to be the shadow president, refusing to duck out of the spotlight as he tries to discredit President Trump at every turn. On Thursday, when Trump pulled the United States out of the Paris Climate Accord one of Obama's signature policies the former president went bat crazy. Speaking as a private American citizen, Obama said, the nations that remain in the Paris Agreement will be the nations that reap the benefits in jobs and industries created. But even in the absence of American leadership, even as this administration joins a small handful of nations that reject the future. I'm confident that our states, cities, and businesses will step up and do even more to lead the way. Remember that Obama signed the agreement without the consent of the U.S. Congress, an executive overreach of extraordinary magnitude. But when Trump decided that the accord was just too costly, $1 billion plus already in taxpayer money, for a measly return, two-tenths of one degree Celsius reduction in global temperature by the year 2100, Obama spoke as if he is still president. And, of course, he praised his own bold vision. A year and a half ago, the world came together in Paris around the first-ever global agreement to set the world on a low-carbon course and protect the world we leave to our children, he said. It was steady, principled American leadership on the world stage that made that achievement possible. It was bold American ambition that encouraged dozens of other nations to set their sights higher as well. And what made that leadership and ambition possible was America's private innovation and public investment in growing industries like wind and solar industries that created some of the fastest new streams of good-paying jobs in recent years, and contributed to the longest streak of job creation in our history. Now, Trump is less than 150 days into his, first, term as president. He's just getting started. But here are few things Obama left behind when his time in the White House was over. A crumbling health care system that is on the verge of implosion, 9,334,590,089,000 dollars and 56 cents, that's trillion, in new debt, a Middle East in absolute shambles, the terror group ISIS stronger than ever and growing fast the U.S. borders so porous some American cities are overrun with illegal aliens, and the list goes on and on. I don't think it's any great shock to any of us that the Democrat who left office might disagree on some policy with his Republican replacement. The surprise is that Obama thinks people might still want to listen to what he has to say on the matter. Obama was the world's worst about unilateral decision-making that bordered on the illegal. He made decisions on a daily basis that were questioned by scholars the world over as to their legality, so his disapproval of the sitting president's completely legal, though liberally frowned upon policy, doesn't hold much weight. If Obama wants to tell us what he's actually upset about, i.e. that he's not still in the White House, then that's an issue for a different day. But for today, we don't give a rip what you think about the Paris Agreement, Mr. Former President, because, thankfully, you're not in office anymore, and America can actually do what's good for us for a chance, instead of what lines the DNC pockets. Thank you, and good night. Source, Daily Wire. Please do not forget like on videos, and subscribe, and comment because your voice matters, and visit our page on Facebook, and like them, and follow up. And thanks for watching.